Hey, hey, this is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Howdy ho, folks. Howdy ho. Howdy ho. <laughs> um, so, Ben, we didn't uh, podcast last week, right? No, we didn't. We had, no. a, we had an off week. We did, that's right, because I was uh, unavailable. My kid was getting his second-degree black belt. He yeah. was working. <laughs> Yeah, and working, yes. Yeah. So both important things. Important things, and the, the main key thing for me to know is uh, though my, my boy, who is about to turn 14, doesn't have the muscle strength yet, he's got the accuracy, and so I don't let him kick or punch me anymore. <laughs> There's no more kicky or punchies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it hurts. It hurts. Not severely, but it can hurt, and as soon as... Uh, he puts some power behind it. It's going to hurt a whole heck of a lot more, and I don't want to be there for that. <laughs> no. He'll be able to take you down. Well, I still got the weight advantage. Quite a lot yeah, of weight well, advantage. <laughs> and the arm length advantage. So, you know, you can yeah, but that's, that's, that's diminishing. Uh, I've only got gets. nine inches on him right now, I think. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so <laughs> catching, catching up. Um, but. In that time period, uh, like we know and love, uh, obviously, there was a certain release that I'm sure everybody got their fingers upon. That Ooh, being yes. the uh, Universal Monsters pack in Zen Williams Pinball FX3. Mm. Yes. And uh, the reaction, by and large, everybody's loving it. And everybody's also hating now what it makes them feel about the other previous volumes. <laughs> uh, yeah, because of the physics, right? Because of the physics, yeah. Once you've gotten a nice taste of uh, really juicy, good physics, it's hard to go back. Even as gorgeous as the tables play, and, I, and we're talking like just nth of a degree differences here. Mm. Um, but it's those differences make huge differences in the overall feel of the game. It's that, it's that what they call it with uh, uh, CG when they're trying to like duplicate humans and they come with the, uh, was the Uncommon Valley or? Yeah, Uncanny Valley. Uncanny yeah. Valley, that's it. Uncanny Valley. Yeah. That's where it gets to. It's so close to being real and then you get a taste of what it would be like if it was practically real and going back to the other, it's just like you can't unnoticed yeah, something doesn't feel right here yeah it's, it's just it's subtle and you, you can't put your finger on it exactly although some people have because they play it way too much uh <laughs> and 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 it's just just enough to take you out of the moment right yeah so mm. uh our friend greg uh who does spacey's arcade uh, on his youtube channel he just posted a video that was all about um this pack and basically his <laughs> his his general plea basically to far or to farsight wrong uh, to Zen was yeah. stop. You've got the physics. We can be happy. We're not any further tweaking is going to make some people more happy and other people unhappy. Right now, we're at a happy spot where uh, it's Feels probably good, as, man. yeah, it's probably as good as you're gonna get. Um, mm. And so, therefore, go back and touch the other. Uh, tables, tables and bring them back up to this level. Yes. Yeah. And what I can say is Deep wound up posting on Digital Pinball Fans uh, forum and said he's now going to make getting those physics into the other tables more of a priority than, basically he said, happening sooner rather than later. Well, that's good. So yeah. that, And sooner, I think you could say sooner with Zen is not one year. Like no. the sooner was with Farsight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this doesn't fall in the category of we'd like to. This falls yeah, in the category like of we will. <laughs> we will. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. So that's that's really good to hear because obviously, if I mean, I was perfectly happy with the physics in Volume Four, and then playing the monsters, they're just juicy good. Like, even, oh yeah, even the Zen version of the tables. Feels, feels like really good. Oh my god, there's some action on the ball that I've not seen in any mm -hmm. of the other tables. No, it's if the the other tables have this dead feel to them, which is you know traditional Zen style um, ball action. But even with this, it's got just that little bit of bounce, 
and just that little bit of variability in it that makes you go, oh, that certainly wasn't happening before. Yeah, and then you witness it in with the Williams physics on, you know. You go, oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think we've we've found that happy medium, and therefore Zen is going to feel okay. And I, I mean, I, I like the approach that they took now that I understand what it was, which was, look, we're going to continually tweak this, and once we feel that we've completely nailed it and the community is happy, then we go back. We roll it out. Yeah. We're not going to keep on reinventing the wheel every single pack, which is ridiculous. So they did the right thing. Yeah. So basically, we were all go, we were just... all in a live beta. You just didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's pretty much how software works these days. Everyone is a beta tester. Yes. Even if it's a public release. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, that's 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 good to know that uh, that'll be happening in that front. Um, mm. Shifting over. And we touched upon this also. Uh, hey, guess who's complaining again once more about the Williams Pinball app? Mm, everybody? <laughs> yes, because, and we already touched upon this last time, the short-term memories uh, regarding the whole two-star business. And uh, here's the thing. I did, because I expected Zen to do what they did, which was they did two limited-timed events. One was for... Um, Monster Mash, the other one was for Creature, wherein you earn only parts for those two tables. Uh, yes. However... They've done that since the last show. They've actually cycled in Creature, and you had your shot at getting some table parts for that if you were diligent and got in there and played it. So, yeah. And, and I gotta say, I was trying to be really diligent with Creature, because I had kind of dropped the ball on Monster Bash. Mm. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna reach level two uh, with Creature. And they the table cycled every six hours instead of every four, yes. four hours. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that made it I always hard. yeah because I always missed one cycle because I was sleeping. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I was still not able to get enough parts to uh, make it to level two. Um, mm. So then I was kind of like, okay, no biggie, whatever. It's just gonna you know cycle into the regular daily challenges. And sure enough, the tables themselves have cycled into the daily challenges, but I'm still not earning table parts. Parts. Right. Yeah. So I reached out on Twitter, like I do, to get their attention and basically said, hey, what's the deal? When can we expect these to drop? And the response is, they're going to do yet another timed event, which is cool. Um, yeah. Because, and you got to understand what these timed events are for. They're not necessarily for people like me who already have all the tables maxed. Therefore, the newbie. Therefore, the person it's that has... It's who hasn't. Right. Who has multiple, multiple tables that aren't maxed at all. And that way you can get a concentrated dose of just those table parts to hopefully mm. bring you up to level two so that you can t play the tables anytime you want and then grind right. away at collecting the rest. That's right. So they, what they want to, they're actually trying to get you to that baseline. One thing that I did notice, though, is that when the the new challenge for Creature cycled in, I didn't get any sort of push. And I got push notifications turned on um, in the app, and I didn't get any notification. Hey, there's a new tournament running. Would you like to? Or not tournament? There's a new there's a new event running. Timed to event, get yeah. Parts. Yeah, timed event. Would you like to come in and have a look at that, mate? I didn't get that, and that's um, that's interesting. And when I say interesting, I think that could be done better. <laughs> Unless there was something wrong with my device, which I don't think there is. No, I I think all I got was a notification that said uh, your challenges have reset, and when I clicked on it, I happened to notice that there was a timed event there. Hmm. I don't think I even got that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm getting intermittent work on like when my challenges reset. Like after I played it and I've maxed out my challenges, I it's often I don't actually get. A, um, a notification coming through. So I just wonder if the app actually needs to be in your recents. In Android, it's called recents, but in iOS, it's like your your app stack that um, you have open. I just wonder if it needs to sort of be running in the background, um, but not actually like swiped away for it to actually keep pushing you into the app. Yeah, I don't know. This is the first time that I actually allowed push notifications to happen. So mm. the push notifications are all kind of new to me on this go around. Mm -hmm. um, 
One, so anyway, what I was going to say, though, is there is going to be, on Twitter they respond, there's going to be another timed event. So hopefully that'll be enough to get up to the, uh, the two tables. And then they said that the earning table parts for both those tables, that'll uh, cycle into the daily challenges come December. Okay. Uh, so there, there is a plan. You just got to wait a little bit. And I know, for those of you that are only playing on mobile and you didn't want to pay anything, it sucks that you're not able to just play the tables after having waited five months. I get it. But, again, this is how Zen is running the mobile app. It hasn't changed since the last when they dropped Volume 4. This is what it is, so get used mm. to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, beyond that, the other question that I had was in the mobile <clears throat> app, it offered, what do they call it? Uh, uh, it's like a monster coin. Uh, I can't even remember what the name of the pack was. Um, here, let me let me look this up real quick. Um, basically, it was you pay twenty coins, and you get a suitcase of um, table parts. And hold on, I got it right. Oh, it's called the Monster Box. Monster now, Box. Here's the problem. There's no indication other than... So there was a, a notification when you first open the app that you can wave away and then it doesn't pop back up. And it tells you what tables you'll get parts for. And it was probably, I think, six tables that you would be getting oh. table parts for, for t spending 20 coins. But, okay. it, but it had grayed out any of the tables that I'd maxed out. So the only two that were alive were obviously for Monster Bash and for uh, Creature. Okay. But... Beyond that, it didn't tell you how many table parts for each table you'd be getting. Um, and like I said, if you've eliminated that and you go to the store and you push that particular tab, all it says is, are you sure you want to purchase? It doesn't give you any It doesn't tell you anything. No, it doesn't tell you anything. And it's like, yeah, guys, bad. you got to tell me what is in this because I'm not just going to, well, I wonder what this button does, you know, and spend yeah, exactly. 20 parts. So yeah, I, they need to do that. Maybe yeah, fix that. I I think the response um, was that you get five table parts. Uh, five per. Type. And how much is this? 20, 20 coins. Twenty coins. So if you the, this would be worthwhile if you had all six tables, but if you just doing two like you, not really worth it. Not really worth it. No. Unless they actually roll all those table parts up in those two tables. And that would be worth it then. Oh, yeah. Like if, it, if it was, well, hey, you know, normally we'd be giving you, you know, what? You equivalent know. of 40 table parts. But here's split between the two, 10, you know, yeah. Then it would be a little bit more yeah, that, worth it. But... That would be a good a good proposition indeed. But, yeah. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't doubt they're doing that. Uh, uh, Jared, I'm just going to make a note here. Uh, I'm not seeing anybody's texts other than or chat messages other than yours. So you are in charge of of following the chat <laughs> today. Yeah, it's just um, we've got friend of the show Jay William one in at the moment. Uh, he was questioning our title. Actually, he was going three quarter scale madness. I guess I've missed the reason this title makes sense since I've just started watching. Well, good news, as I said, uh, Jay William, uh, we're about to get there. Yes, we will be getting there. But before we get there, I'm going to touch upon one other thing Zen-related. Um, and just kind of know, folks, this might be a shorter-than-usual podcast. Because um, yeah. i got to go to work. <laughs> yeah. i got to go snap picky work for Work for the mouse. Yes, something like yeah. that. Um, so Mel tweeted out that there would be another table pack uh, before mm. the end of 2019. And I am here to tell you that... Yes, there will be, because we've started another beta. Yes. So yes, rumors have been confirmed. You will see something coming out. <laughs> Beyond that, I say nothing. That's right. Yes. Because truth be told, we haven't been told if we were even able to announce the beta. Although I don't see why we wouldn't have been able to, because they said that another beta Mel's kind of already hinted on yes. Twitter. Yes, yes. So, yeah. but I'm not I'm not hinting anything else beyond the fact that there is a beta. So there, deal with it, people. And Jared just looks on. <laughs> yes, I'm just reading. No, I'm just reading the the the, slide, the, the messages. Uh, oh, I see. I finally see. Uh, I finally see messages. Okay. 
Hooray. Uh, let's see what well, let's see what Jay Willen says because you know we like to encourage people to actually show up to our live shows and because of that we're gonna read we'll read. So he says, okay, thanks, Jared. Played for fun in my first ever non-digital pinball tournament. Congrats. Uh, found Welcome interesting to that, the real world of pinball. Right? Found interesting that creature in FX3, I hit the middle move your car ramp from right flipper, but on a particular physical table where the flippers were set slightly differently, it only worked from the left flipper. Really? Interesting. You should... Left flipper should be the hard one to hit that center shot from, not the right flipper. It sounds like to me that they've got their flippers misaligned. Yeah, a little, they... a little bit of borking going on there. <laughs> or they've got banana flippers on it, one of the two. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I've yet to play a table with the banana flippers, so... Eh. Oh, I, I, the Netherworld's got a their, their time warp, I think it is. The one with banana flippers on, they're rethemed to Revenge of the Hot Monster. They've got original banana flippers for it. It is weird, man. I bet. <laughs> they play very strangely. Backhand city, basically. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, let's let's move on a little bit to what the the whole point of this uh, weird, odd title is about. Um, yeah. As was pointed out on Digital Pinball Fans, and then when I did a Google or a uh, YouTube search, um, turns out there's a couple of videos regarding this, but will be probably the first ones to actually comment from. Our status as digital pinball podcast gods. Uh, yes, that's right. Um, <laughs> gods, right? Okay, sure. Yeah. Hey, you know, a little self inflation never hurt anybody, right? Um, no, it's called marketing. <laughs> there is a company called Toy Shock who is manufacturing a three quarter scale digital pinball machine, much like what uh, One Up has done with the pin, uh, not pinball, the uh, arcade cabinets. Um, oh yeah, the ones that they were selling through Best Buy, etc. LD down here. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, this one currently uh, that is being sold uh, can be found on Walmart for pre-order. Um, but mm. anyway, so it's a digital pinball machine, uh, three-quarter scale. When I say three-quarter scale, it is using a twenty-four inch display. Uh, you know, for the the, the main play field. It is 51 inches long, 30 inches wide, and 17 inches tall uh, for the playfield. So it's almost a little bit smaller than a safe cracker. Right. That would be a mm. good right. Um, the it is a translate with uh, I couldn't tell if it was two person or four person scoring. Like there's spots for four. But I don't know if all four displays work, or if it's only two displays that actually work. Um, you know, for and it looks alpha, like alpha it's, numeric. and it's because there there is support for system eighty B and system eighty and system eighty A games. So that means you do get the Bone Busters era, etc. Right. So, so so because I didn't say what it is, uh, Gottlieb Digital Pinball on this. Uh, 12 tables, mm. none of them being DMD. All of them, interestingly enough, available in Pinball Arcade. And if yes. you watch the video, it looks very much like this is the mobile app version of Pinball Arcade for the machines being, mm. or the playfields being displayed. However, Farsight's name is not anywhere on this. The only other name associated, and it's actually stamped on the uh, cabinet, is C21. Uh, I think C21 Digital, something like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it, nowhere does it mention Farsight. Nowhere does it mention Pinball Arcade. Yet, clearly, this is what it is, because why else would they have selected the very tables that they selected? Yeah, the um, twelve. There it's are 12. interesting that only went with twelve. Well, okay, so so here I, I I can tell you what the twelve tables are, um, and again these are all uh, alphanumeric, no DMD. So they are mm. Big Shot, Centigrade Thirty Seven, Jack's Open, Haunted House, Bone Busters, Class of Eighteen Twelve, uh, El Dorado City of Gold. Wrong El Dorado. Uh, yeah, incorrect one. Um, Black Hole. Gone Nuts, Victory, Lights, Camera, Action, and TX Sector. 
Um, mm. with <laughs> Jared, you're just like, oh god. Um, uh, now, like I said, these are all uh, alphanumerics. You may be questioning, though, so what... There's 12 other tables available in Pinball Arcade from Gottlieb that didn't make the cut. And I'll point this out. We're not seeing Central Park, which is a EM real machine. Although Big Shot is too, isn't it? Um, It's reels, yeah. right? It's reels. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so there went yep. my theory. So you're missing the, uh, Central Park, El Dorado, and Genie. Genie being a wide body that might have caused some issue with the screen that they're using. Maybe. Um, maybe. And uh, and then the, so the remainder of the uh, things that you're not getting are uh, World Tour, uh, Cactus Jacks, Cue Ball Wizard, uh, Gladiator, Pistol Poker, Rescue 911, Teed Off, and Wipeout. Which, me yeah. not being a fan of got like premiere i'm not too sad about the ones that are missing but here's the deal um a it's kind of ugly it's got this massively thick bezel all the way around the screen and i kind of get it having a thick bezel down near the uh the apron where you're gonna put your palms mm. but it just looks terrible it looks um, gross yeah, yeah like it a, looks like a like a big tablet yeah which, <laughs> It probably is. Probably is. Um, <laughs> the other thing, uh, the thing is, it's interesting. Is I'm looking at the. I've actually found a page with more details on it, and it's like there's a menu select, but I'm just not sure if the screen is a touch screen or not. I don't. I'm I trying, seriously doubt it's a touch screen. I don't think it is, but there's, I don't know because I believe there's three buttons on the front of the cabinet, and then your pin, your flipper buttons on the side. Um, mm. The other thing is, is that the back glass, like I said, is a translate. Hey, hope you like haunted house because that's what you get. Um, which, yeah. in terms of pinball cabinet art that they could have used based off of these, I would have much rather had either Victory or uh, Black Hole or Big Shot or Jack's Open. Any of those would have been a much better choice, in my opinion. Uh, for something to sit in your house, as opposed to haunted house, which, I mean, great yeah. for Halloween, not for year round, right? And you know what? I'm looking at this cabinet, and <laughs> I, I've, we could talk about this if we've got time. But um, Melsby's Pinball Adventure, um, the ghost table, I see where they lifted their art from, like the haunted house house. Yeah, <laughs> is the same house that they got their um <laughs> their uh thing from well, their kind of art funny. from. Interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting game, that one. Um, yeah. Now, I, I think the whole thing also weighs 61 pounds. So it's got some heft to it. Mm. Um, you notice it doesn't actually have uh, tilt? It I don't believe it has buttons. tilt. It does have, it a, does. It does have a plunger. It has, it has buttons. Side nudge buttons. Oh, it's side so, nudge buttons. Yeah, so, yeah, pretty horrible. But it does have a plunger. It does have a digital plunge, plunge of all those things, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I applaud the idea. And hmm. uh, having built, uh, you know, this thing for behind me. Bucks. For 400 bucks, I'd be curious to know uh, if it'd be worth gutting and making your own <laughs> thing out of. Um, I don't know, because have a look at the height. So you've got a total height of 31.5 inches. Now... I know that the legs alone on a Gottlieb System 80 are 27 inches. Well, no, that's what so, I'm saying. It's 17 from what I read. It was 51 it, inches deep, 30 inches wide, 17 high. You're probably reading for the uh, the total of the back glass included. No, I'm looking at the uh, dimensions on... Uh, there's a link in the, uh, the Twitch chat from Armchair Arcade that have uh, 31.5 inches or 800 millimeters from floor to front lockdown. So that's not high at all. I'd have a lot of trouble playing this. Yeah. Like, it'd be like, it'd be like a little teeny tiny, it's almost like a countertop. Well, the and thing then... is you could, you could play it like that because there's actually no reason why you need it on legs at all. Cause no. it doesn't have a digital, it doesn't have an analog tilt. So you don't need it on legs. You can just put it on the ca countertop. Like, Again, it's, it's, seen... it would be it'd fit perfectly fine sitting next to these one-up cabinets, um, you know, because it'd be yeah. the same scale. Do you know what I'd rather do? 
I would rather go and buy the um, pinball promo cabinet that accepts a switch and um, it looks it accepts a 31 inch um, LCD um, and the, these cabinets like they, they don't have the look of a um, pinball machine like that but they're a better height they're um, they've got a bigger screen real estate and you don't have to just play the 12 haunted house like the 12 Gottlieb games you can play Zen on it you can play um, anything on the switch on it and it's m much better like I would I, I don't know if I can import them here because it's uh it's made in I think it's Spain or something like that but like I, I see them all the time on my um, uh, Instagram feed and it looks really good I'm like I, I if I was doing that I'd just get one of them I wouldn't get this so so here's my question though uh does farsight know oh who knows like because because uh, farsight has an agreement with arcuda and this is not arcuda it's no it's definitely not arcuda i, I think you can pretty much safely say that uh yeah this is <laughs> this is not anything to do with those companies because here's the uh, other thing why wouldn't farsight have said anything about this they have been hurting for pinball news of any sort. And you don't make mention that you've got a product that's going to be, you know, is available for pre-order right now and available for purchase in the beginning of December? Yeah. No. It seems a little odd unless... <laughs> here's theory number two. Uh, unless Farsight is saying, Adios we're out of here, we got no license, and we're going to go for a quick cash grab before they can throw a cease and desist at us. Yeah. Like, I look at, like, you look at the interface and everything, though, and it's like, it's, it's definitely not Farsight's mobile interface. Like, no. It's, it's I, it, it's a custom interface. It's, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, yeah, definitely not. Um, so I'm. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, man. This is uh, this is whack. <laughs> it's it's is a little bizarre, is. isn't it? Uh huh. That's one way of putting it. Uh, and the funny thing is, when you go to Toy Shock Tyo's website, um, the 21C Digital Pinball thing is not actually listed in their navigation tree. So no, it is not. You go to and yet the video com, is, but navigating to the product is not. No, you, it's it's like an unlisted thing. It's really bizarre. So, um, yeah. Also, their website is really crap. Um, yeah, but... I'm, I'm I'm calling <laughs> shenanigans. But um... <laughs> yeah, I'd I'd suggest that this is uh, yeah, this is well and truly off the grid. Uh... <laughs> and yet, it's being sold. Like I said, it's being sold through uh, Walmart's website. Um, so the thing we... is, though, once you once you sell them. Uh, it, it is a standalone product. You can guarantee there will be no updates received for this product. It, it will be it's what you see is what you get. It ships as it is. And yeah. That's what that's what I'm saying. That. I'm almost thinking this is uh, a catch me if you can situation where it's like, hey, we're going to put this out. And by the time anybody says, hey, you got to pull it off the shelves, we'll already have sold our run and we'll be done. Pretty much. Like it's a... Uh, it's almost like going back to the days of 70s and 80s licensing. <laughs> and, you know? and, and 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 interestingly enough, this is where, again, I'm like, and Ms. Farsight involved? Because mm, th I this is the, the, well, I don't like to allege anything in this particular case, but uh, <laughs> it would let's, be an interesting strategy. Let, let, let's put it to you this way. I, my gut tells me that Farsight is not involved. But if I found out that they were, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they'd ever go into the the physical cabinet manufacturing space. But, I mean, in this case, Toy Shock seems to have taken on that risk. You have a look at the scale, though. And the first opening shots of uh, the, the video, it's like the kids are having a great time on it. It's perfect size for them. And then you see grand granddad or old old mate stand in front of it and he's like hunched over like not like you know the hunchback of Notre Dame trying to play this thing and uh it's just uh <laughs> yeah it's it's uh, clearly aimed at kids and look if four hundred dollars 
is all you have lying around and you really want to get some pinball action in your house, well, look, I'll tell you what, I'd rather have this over the pin. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. So, it, you know, this this is a good option for people who want something for the kids to have fun with. And look, my kids, they'd probably have fun with this for 400 US, which is like, you know, $3,000 Australian. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm um as an aside I'm doing my order for Force 2 on um on PBR and I've I've got a spreadsheet that has a option for um international foreign exchange and the Australian dollar is 68 cents at the moment to the greenback. Holy cow. Oh, that is it's insane. Just brutal. So the order that I'm getting I've got to keep under the $1000 Australian customs limit otherwise I play duty on all the parts. And I'm at, with the current exchange rate, I'm at about $960 running for parts. Wow. For this thing. That is amazing. So I might have to drop some stuff off it and put it onto the um, the Pink Panther order when I get that one done because it's like, far out. It's, it's like really close. Luckily, they don't, they, it's only the invoice parts. It's not the shipping. If it was shipping, well, I'd have to like knock 100 bucks off it because like yeah it's just brutal so I, the, the exchange rate is not going to get better that's the only problem i'm just going to have to suck it up is, which is means this, that is this because australia's on fire right now i don't know if it has anything to do with our being on fire it's just because we're australia and we're back in this is almost the same exchange rate that we we're experiencing when it was the 1970s this is as bad as it was back then so uh, i don't know what's going on I'll never forget when I was working in a uh, men's clothing store and these two Australian guys uh, came into the store and they were having a field day buying up, this is how far back we go, Z Cavaricis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which would be pants. Pants that uh, went like almost, well, basically all the way up to your rib cage um, and then oh, flared widely at the hips ones. and then yeah. tapered right back down at the ankles. Uh, oh, the wow. just just look up if you want true '80s style, folks. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. it, it's like late '80s, early '90s. Um, look up Z Cavrici. These pants were again. This is back in well, when I was selling them, it was '91. And oh yeah, look at them. Oh. And they sold for I'm not kidding you, eighty dollars a pair back in 1991. Oh, yeah. Um, but they were cool I as hell. It was like, basically, you look like a member of Depeche Mode if you were wearing them. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like, they are high-waisted, pleated, and tapered trousers. Yes. Popularized in the 80s. They were... And they're they, returning. They're returning to celebrate their 30th anniversary. Are you kidding me? They're, ret <laughs> they're returning. I'm just reading an article about it. Well, it's like, I mean, I... I it's kind of like how uh, there's some women's jeans and shorts manufacturers that are going back to the uh, the higher waistline for for women, and I thought, yeah. oh, it's only a matter of time before the guys start getting those Cavaricis back. the The problem with the Cavaricis is you, if you were any larger than a size thirty three waist, they look terrible on you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Because you have to have a narrow middle, and then you, of course, you'd wear an overly baggy shirt, so it'd make your shoulders like huge. So, right. as a guy, you looked like a total, like you were a V, and then a V, you know, a reverse V. It was just, you know, it's the 90s look. Um, and, it, and it was, I also think of it as like, kind of like the Kingdom Hearts look, <laughs> or, or or the Final <laughs> Fantasy look. It's belts everywhere. I had a yeah. pair that had three belts. I'm not kidding you. Three, three belts. Three belts. <laughs> wow. That's uh, incredible. And there was this whole technique that you had to learn to uh, how to taper the leg, how to do the fold, and then roll the roll it up. And of course, then you can't wear socks, so it's also went into the whole no wearing socks in your shoes look. Oh yeah, they're great. They're like capri. They're like capri pants, but horrible. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and and so what you would do is you'd wear you'd wear your Z cab Richies and then your hypercolor uh, shirt. Oh yeah. Oh. Hypercolor, yeah, where you can tell where the handprints, uh, where people had touched you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, when when touching other people um, was okay. Right? Can you can you imagine? Me. I mean, there's literally the commercials where people putting their hands all over your shirts so that your a handprint would be there. 
Yeah. That Imagine wouldn't, that today. <laughs> it wouldn't <laughs> exactly fly in today's culture, other than people oh. going, He touched me! Look, I have evidence! Yeah, um, exactly right. It'd probably <laughs> actually be hypercolor with DNA. <laughs> DNA. <laughs> <classic>. <laughs> now with DNA swab. Um, right. Yeah. So, uh, how did I get off on that tangent? Oh, the Australian uh, guys. So, the Australian yes, guys... <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, circling back around. Uh, the Australian guys came in, and they were going nuts, buying tons of these and a whole bunch of our uh, suits that we had. The <laughs> it was a great store. Uh, these suits were basically, did you have a dance that you need to go to? A funeral. What about a wedding? Buy our one-day-only suit. <laughs> right. It was, it was great for that kind of purpose. You know, you didn't spend a lot of money. You looked good for that one day, and then, you know, you were done with it. Um, See, this is um, we have a store here in Australia called Lowe's, and Lowe's is uh, it's predominantly a menswear store, and they specialize in suits that is there for a good time and a long time. Um, <laughs> they also have a fine selection of uh, Hawaiian style shirts. In fact, it's almost like they have a rack dedicated to their Hawaiian style shirts. So Hawaiian shirts and suits, and suits that are like very entry level. Right, Let's like disposable, you know, disposable suits. Yeah, you buy them; they're like 150 Australian. Yeah, and it's like the full thing. Like even, I think you even get a shirt with it. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Ours, our deal was, and don't, I'll get back to the Australians. Don't worry. Um, our <laughs> deal was. We'll circle back again. Yes, yes. Ninety nine bucks got you uh, pants, jacket, shirt, tie, and socks. And socks. Oh, jeez. Really, you really didn't have to go anywhere else. Nope. Anyhow, nope. so we had a ton Aussie of mates. So, like I said, Aussie. Every, everybody that would be going to a school dance came to us. And Oh, yeah. and if you went $129, then you got the microfiber suit. Oh. Ooh. oh and yes. the, and, and you the, could go around zapping everyone. It was uh, great. Oh, microfiber and the shark skin uh, texture. Not texture, but uh, color coloring. Yeah, so it was iridescent. Oh, yeah. It would kind of change depending on the light that hit you. Oh, 90 no. suits, babies. 90 suits. <laughs> That is horrible. Oh, oh, excuse me. My oh. wife has popped in and says, what was the best thing about working at that store? Yeah, that's where I met my wife. Thank you. Ah, um, <laughs> ah I see. Was she, was she in the market for a fine suit? No, she was not in the market for a fine suit. She was just in the market for a job. Um, for a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Australian guys, yeah, they went nuts buying everything. And I was like, you know, I hear the accent. I'm like, what's going on, guys? And they go, oh, my God. The exchange rate, they go, you have no idea how expensive this stuff would be. We're just shoving this all in our suitcases. <laughs> yeah, that must have been when the exchange rate was okay. Um, like, there was a point at which I think in the late 90s, early 2000s, when we actually had like an 80, an 80 cents to the dollar exchange rate. And I think it actually went up to 90 at one point. That was good. Like, you could import stuff from the US and <clears throat> really... Like it was good, but it's not good anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was that was uh, Australians in the clothing store, which comes back to your exchange rate for buying pinball parts, which comes back to Farsight not knowing what the hell is going on with this machine. I bet. Okay, yeah, <laughs> most likely. Mm. It, it just I don't know. Like I said, it it seems kind of odd and shady, but. Uh, Hey, if anybody winds up buying one of these, let us know. If you've got a spare, for what is it, four hundred dollars, four hundred dollars yank, just throw it down and and th throw it away <laughs> and buy one of these tables. Or you know, Christmas is coming up, and uh, you can just uh, uh, send a private message to me, and I'll give you my address, and I'll do a review here. Yeah, you send you send it. <laughs> yeah, send it to Chris. Don't send it to me. Because no, the exchange rates are terrible. Four hundred. <laughs> well, it, it'll probably cost you four hundred dollars. Although you know there might be a local distributor down here, like maybe Aldi down here might actually carry this range. Because it seems that if Walmart carried over in um, the US, it seems that Aldi will often get the stuff down here. I mean, you um, know, this whole thing was manufactured in China. Oh yeah, it looks <laughs> it looks totally Chinese. I love to, I love to just take the thing apart and see what's inside it, but it's a solid box. There's not even a coin door on it. It's just a yeah. solid panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's made for quick assembly by you, the the homeowner, uh, or the yeah. The it'll be consumer. a box. And it, it'll just be like in a in a carton, and it'll, it'll just be the box, and probably the head will just somehow bolt on, and 
there you go. It'll probably just be like it literally there'll be a little connector that will seat into the head when you as when you assemble this thing. It'll just be a plug and play almost. Um yeah, it's uh Order yours today. Oh. Um <laughs> order yours today. Free steak knives. <laughs> Buy now, we'll send you another one. No. Uh, <laughs> well, you got two. <laughs> this, I always tell this, and uh, it was back when Dennis Miller was actually funny. Um, he used to tell a, a, a joke about uh, buying a suit at Kmart. Now, I don't know if you know what a Kmart is, Jared, but it's... We have, uh, we have Kmart here. Home of the Blue Light Special. And he was like, come in and buy your, get yourself a Century 21 gold jacket. Uh, and, then, and then he said, except for he was saying it was a short sleeve suit jacket. Because that was even selling the comedy there, and it was buy one get uh, buy one get one free. And then his joke was, he goes, "Folks, two of shit is shit." <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "If they really want to screw you, they'd give you a third. <laughs> <laughs> which which years later made me laugh hysterically because I was in a Toys R Us. Uh, hey, welcome back, Toys R Us. Um, and they were selling these things called Juju Pets, which were these little hamsters <laughs> that yeah. you, like, they were battery-operated hamsters. Yeah. And they had had their run, and they weren't selling well anymore at all, and Toys R Us had buy one, get two free. Get two free? Yeah, buy one, so get two free. They were literally giving them away. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and wow. the buy one price... Was like heavily discounted, like so like nine nine cents or something ridiculous. Yeah, like they were that. they were clearing shelf space to be sure. Uh, yeah. It was basically they were one step away from just literally upturning him into the bin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that's uh. Yeah, we're gonna call it now because now we're just talking about nonsense, which is fun. But I gotta yeah. go. I gotta get ready for work. So, um. Will we be next week? Next week, I'm going to say maybe? Mm, yeah. Maybe. We'll we'll see what uh, what my schedule uh, I, I th- turns out. I don't know. It might be busy. It might not be. Um, and we'll see if we have more things to talk about uh, because it's amazing how one day there isn't and the next day there is. It's all the things. Yeah. All the things. And as we like to say, Jared, what are we going to be talking about next week? Well, the... Probably, if we are actually on air next week, probably some stuff and some things. There you go, folks. What more mm. do you possibly ask for? All right. As usual, we want to just say a big appreciation for everybody that does watch the podcast live on Twitch. And we also give a big thumbs up to everybody that uh, catches up with us later on YouTube. And I'm going to be one of those people. Make sure you stop the like button. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and, yeah, do what uh, you want. Yeah, do what you want. But do you know what actually we do prefer is right there, the little Twitter handles. Go ahead and follow us there. Um, yeah, have a chat with us online. Yeah, have a chat. You know, we, we like it's chatting. It's the quickest way to get us. Yeah. It absolutely is. Um, and if you see anything that uh, you think would be uh, pique our interest and make for good topics in the podcast, that is absolutely the best way to contact. Just link it to us. Say, hey, blockade or hey, at shut your traps or hey, at Jared Morgs. Check out this and... We probably yeah. will. All, all three, because then, you know, because I don't really check the blockade account that much. It's yeah, I pretty Chris. much, that's pretty much me. <laughs> yeah, at there. Chris, it's basically Chris is the blockade account, except when I post episodes. Yes. And then I I use the blockade account to post episodes. When, whenever in the blockade Twitter account it says I, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> and whenever it says, when an app mentions us both, it's me writing the announcement post for the episode so there you go a little bit of inside baseball about how we share a social media account it's exciting aren't you glad you stayed to the end i know you are all right uh oh also be sure to check out the website which is blockadepinball.com slash episodes that's where you find all previous episodes as well as uh links to all the various things we talked about uh in the episode i'm sure jared will be throwing a link to cavarichis (laughs) oh oh, yes i will be perhaps even pictures that might even be the title card of the show (laughs) yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, th- talk about three quarter scale. You know, it makes you look three quarter tall because of when you wear those pants, it makes your chest itty bitty. So, yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, there you go. It makes sense. Yep. All right. Well, that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.